If you look at the name, correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar, you will see that there are three components to this technology. Correct sentence structure, parse, and syntax. Now the correct sentence structure, communication, is how you communicate and make claims. It's a specific sequence and functions that enable one to present their claims, position one's claims as facts. And then the parse aspect of it is parsing of words. Every syllable in a word has its own meaning in the fiction. And then the one way, uh, the way one would parse that is to use all different types of cross-referencing in dictionaries, etymology dictionaries, Latin dictionaries, Sanskrit dictionary, Greek dictionary, French, whatever, all different kinds and cross-reference and then come to the earliest nativity fiction meaning of the word, which is what it will, what it means from the earliest, usually Proto-Indo-European root of the word, sometimes older. And then the last part is the syntax, which is identifying the fiction, fraudulent grammar performance in a document or in a grammar word group. In order to do this, one must also be capable of doing this. Uh, if one is to command a correct language performance from another entity and say that they are not using correct grammar, then the person, the claimant, must be able to perform correct grammar themselves and have closure on it. You can't have one without the other. And this, by the way, is a military contract I voided because I am the voidance with all military contracts because I'm a peaceful and neutral vessel and they know about it. So that's what this video is about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple comments that I found in a public Parsi Syntax Grammar Facebook group. And I'm going to show that how to the untrained eye, it may seem like it is a correct sentence structure, but that I'm going to go through and through the continuance of the evidence, show that it is actually a fictitious conveyance of grammar. And then at the end, of course, I'm going to offer a solution as to how to create a correct sentence structure. And in doing so, I am going to show how knowledge is authority. If you're confident with your knowledge and you have closure on your knowledge, then you have authority over your grammar and your contracts. You can't have one without the other. If you present a problem, present a solution, you're in compliance with rule one, rule equal. If you're just presenting problems and criticisms and and whatever, then you're part of the problem, <laughs> with my opinion. If you present both, now you're in compliance with the rule one, rule equal. If you're going to syntax and you're going to critique someone's grammar, then you yourself must perform with the correctness. And I'm going to show that next. What you are looking at are two comments that I took off of a public Parse Syntax Grammar Facebook group. And what I'm going to show you here, what I'm going to demonstrate, is something that to the untrained eye may appear to be quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax grammar, but it in fact is not. And I'm going to go through the closures as to how I know that. And it's going to show a few points here that I'm looking to make. Number one, that knowledge is authority. In order to make a claim, especially a correct sentence structure claim, one must have closure on the grammar they're using and know how to use the grammar that they're using. And number two, they must just know how to 
position their facts with the correctness and the correct volition or else it will just fall to pieces. And as you can see in these comments, you can see some colons, you can see some hyphens. However, you look deeper into it just on the surface, just without even knowing quantum grammar, you see multiple spelling errors. You see things that appear to be names that are spelled wrong. And the capitalization is not consistent. And it's just pretty much assumption, presumption, uh, opinion much like you see in a fiction court. It is not correct sentence structure. And I'm going to show you why that is. And then at the end, I'm going to give you an example of what correct sentence structure is and exactly how authority from knowledge works. I'm going to demonstrate how to check a correct sentence structure to see if it is actually correct or not. A number of ways that one may certify this. And I'm going to use the comments uh, that I posted in the picture. You can see that they are actual comments that were made in a public forum, although I've removed the names because I'm not in the business of naming and shaming anyone. I do want to help people to learn how to do this, uh, perform this technology correct with the correctness. And so that's how we know we can certify a knowledge level by the performance of the grammar which is what I'm doing here. So we'll start at the bottom and we'll say, in correct sentence structure, we know that the colon in front of the first letter, capital letter of a sentence would mean for the, using the correct sentence structure mechanics. So this sentence says, for the Russell hyphen said, now we have a colon and no space. So what is that? I don't know what that is, but it says colon and then capital J-A-S-O-N hyphen, Matthew, okay. I don't know who that is because I've never seen the word M-A-T-H-E-W. And then hyphen was, no was is past tense. So there's a red flag right there, not to mention this red flag right here. And in the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, mechanics, and under the rule one rule equal judgeship mechanics, what happens on one side of the hyphen must happen on the other side of the hyphen. So if you capitalize this letter R, then this letter S must also be capitalized. Just the same as this letter W in the past tense was. So there's a violation. That is not correct sentence structure. This, because it's hyphenated, would be taken as a compound fact. However, this colon in the middle, which I don't know if it's meant as some sort of character or if it's a name, or I don't know what that is. Looking at it through my syntax lens. So I'm just gonna take this whole thing and say, it's probably a pronoun of some sort. But we'll find out what it really is as we go along. So now we have good. What is good? So we have for the Russell said Jason Matthew was and then good. In correct sentence structure, okay, we have our position lodial and in effect. So we have our five, six, seven, assumedly. Now what do we have? Good of the stop. Where's the position lodial fact in there? There is none. There is absolutely none. So now that throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. And then here again, we have the capitalization uh, discrepancy. There's no consistency in the language performance. Same thing here. So going backwards, this would be syntax like this. Good hyphen tutor would be a dangling participle verb. The would be an adverb. Of would be a pronoun. Comment would be an adjective. The would be an adverb. With would be a pronoun. I did void here is one whole thing with hyphens, so that would be an adjective. And because this is not correct sentence structure, this colon just becomes another form of punctuation breaking the continuance of the evidence, like a, co a comma, semicolon, period, whatever. So that's how it's treated. So we have a, 
a break here and a space and a break here. Now we have correct. And then we have another colon here, which is a break and it continues to Evans. So correct is standing by itself. It's a pronoun. This is a symbol. I don't know what this is. There's no closure to it. In the fiction, we'd assume it's a, an ampersand. It means in. But here, I don't know that for sure because there's no closure given. So that's a pronoun. Stop is an adjective. The is an adverb. Of is a pronoun. Good. Well, you and I can certify what good is or even bad is. So that would be tangible contract adjective. And then we have this whole thing, which I'm going to take as a whole, and that's an, an adjective. We'll call that an adjective. So that is not correct sentence structure. What is the most efficient way of checking that? Read it backwards. How would you read this sentence backwards? So we have of the good tutor. So what is, the, what is congruent with of, with? So with the good tutor of the comment, there's no verb in this sentence, so there is no verb. So how would you read that backwards? By the I did void here. And then the next one you have with the stop and with the correct and then good. And then by the wrestle said Jason Matthew was. It makes absolutely no sense. I tried. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at here is this one. So, again, incorrect sentence structure. This colon here at the beginning is supposed to mean for the. So we have for the, and then Jason hyphen is hyphen making hyphen some hyphen mistakes. So he, the person put a verb in his compound fact, and he put a gerund modifier in there. Because if you look in the fiction, the gerund ing modifies a tangible contract word into an adjective. It modifies it into modification. So making is modification. It's a gerund, no contract. So Jason is making some mistakes. So be that what it may, as it may, this is to be taken as a compound No, because it's hyphenated. So that means this is a position bodial fact phrase, supposedly. For the Jason is making some mistakes. Next, we have in his latest video. So this, I guess, this in would take the, the form of a positional, and then his would be lodial, and then latest video would be the fact. What is incongruent with? Let's read this backwards. Out his latest video by the Jason is making some mistakes, period. Out his latest video by the Jason is making some mistakes. Does that make any sense? There's not even a verb in that. There is no sentence there. In is not a correct positional. There are four positionals with two congruencies. By is congruent with for. With is congruent with of. In is not congruent with any of those because if it were, then that would be a violation of the one word, one meaning, one congruency rule. This is not correct sentence structure. So how would that be syntax? Latest video would be dangling participle verb. His would be adverb. In would be a pronoun. And this last bunch of words hyphenated would be an adjective. So let's move on to the next one. So now we have another full colon in front of this I. For the I do syntax practice, so that's one position lodial fact phrase, on the Skype. So what is on? What, con what, what positional is congruent with on? Off. So reading that backwards would be off the Skype by the I do syntax practice, period. So let's move on to the next one. Had a cancellation on this day. 
So is this person saying that this positional lodial phrase, for the, is also positioning this, for the, had a cancellation, and then on this day. This is, even to me, it's, it's a bit confusing. So then we have, we could have chatted. Again, this person does not follow the rule one, rule equal mechanics of capitalizing each fact in the compound fact. As um, I was told by Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould, back when I did my uh, correction of my name last year, these are rule one, rule equal judgeship mechanics that are being violated here. Then we, we could have chatted, but got busy and then with other matters. So there's a period. So let's read that backwards. How would that make sense going backwards? Of other matters, but got busy. Okay, so we would say that this position, this position, lodial colon positions this, for the but got busy. For the we could have chatted. For the had a cancellation off this day, because what's congruent with on? Off. And then again, the off the Skype by the I do syntax practice. So what would that work out to be? With other matters, matters is a verb, other adverb with is pronoun, but got busy, be an adjective. This would be a pronoun standing by itself, a hyphenated, whatever that is. On this day, verb, adverb, pronoun, adjective, The adverb on his pronoun, I do syntax practice would be three. You can't really read that backwards, it doesn't make sense. It is not a correct sentence structure. Let's graph it the way Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller used to do. So we say, for the Jason is making some mistakes. Okay, next one. In his latest video, period. For the, and then in his latest video, which we just certified in is not correct sentence structure. It's not a positional because what's congruent with in, out. If I'm, if I'm not correct with that and it's something else, then please someone uh, contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and let me know. I know it can't be four of with or by because those are already taken. One performance, one positional, one congruency. So now we have for the I do syntax practice on the Skype, had a cancellation on this day. This is a really weird way to do it. So that's another positional. Then we have the comma. We could have chatted. with other matters. So there's your correct sentence structure. Please read that backwards and show me how it says the same thing forwards as it does backwards. I'm not even sure what it says forwards, but backwards, <laughs> there you go. Let's finish it out. With my teaching, Adverb, pronoun. Let's put it back to the way it was. Speaking to people in this type of battle language, void of the correctness, certainly not correct sentence structure, and then the people will learn this. And now they're void of the correct sentence structure. 
and it just snowballs. This is my favorite part of the video where I get to show a positive performance, demonstrate how to create a correct sentence structure, and to show while doing that how knowledge is authority. You see here and here. We have the four positionals I'll be using, the only four that I use, for, by, of, with. Four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. And this comes into play when you read the sentence backwards, one congruency per positional. In compliance with rule one, rule equal, one word, one meaning, quantum grammar, a finite quantity. And then here's the sequence that I'm using. Cause, concern, verb, possessive, concern, possessive, concern, possessive, authority. For, of, verb, with, of, with, of, with, by. In the past, I've used other terms, fiction terms, to convey this, such as cause, effect, or cause, concern. I'm sorry, cause, consequence, verb, possessive, authority, possessive, authority, or possessive, consignment, possessive, assignment. I've decided to bring it further into compliance with the rule one, rule equal, even using fiction grammar in the teaching. So up here, of is a concern, and down here, of is also a concern. One word, one meaning. And I'm also going to show you how the syntax is correct, but we'll see that as we go forwards and backwards. I've written it in graph form, which is a good way to check uh, the correct sentence structure. And of course, the most efficient way to check a correct sentence structure is, does it make sense forwards and backwards? Does it mean the same thing? Does it say the same thing? Forwards and backwards. And this does. And this is the finite mean of authority taken from my code dictionary, which governs my construct. For the authority of this finite mean is, with this claim of this power and control with the navigation and fate of the document vessels, with the certification by the author and creator's knowledge. So the cause is the authority. What's the authority concerned with? The finite mean is what I'm sharing with you, the finite mean. Now we've done our two points, drawn our straight line, drop our verb of the thinking in. Possessive always follows the verb, is, with this claim. What is this claim, this possessive claim concerned with? Power and control. With what? Possessing what? With the navigation in fate. What is the navigation in fate concerned with? Of the document vessels. With the certification by the author and creator's knowledge. So author and creator's knowledge is the ultimate authority of this whole thing and of the certification, possession of the whole thing. In compliance with the correct sentence structure mechanics over there and with the one positional, one congruency rule. Now to go backwards. Now this becomes the cause. By switches out with for and of switches out with with. You will always have a cause and a concern and then a verb. You would never have more than two position lodial fact phrases, position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. So, going by those rules, for the author and creator's knowledge of the certification is with the document vessels of the navigation and fate, with this power and control of this claim, with this finite mean, by the authority. And then to syntax it, using the syntax key, which we'll be using uh, the middle portion, we have a 567. Five, six, seven, two, five, six, seven, five, six. Now, this is syntax. There's a 707 for space considerations. This, the closure on this forward slash is it means and, the conjunction. Therefore, I syntax at 707 because conjunctions in correct sentence structure are neutral values and they connect either two sevens or two five six sevens. So sometimes you'll see someone uh, write something and they'll put the conjunction up there and they'll put a, 
a little um, colon after it. It would just mean of this power and of this control. But I like to simplify things, so I say of this power and control. With this navigation and fate, same thing, 707. With the document vessels, this is a compound fact, same as this, so it's a 7. 567, 56707, another compound. So you see, forwards, backwards, mathematically certified, correct sentence structure in compliance with the basic correct sentence structure mechanics. I hope this was helpful to you out there and clears up some of the confusion that I see out there. This is mathematically certified forwards and backwards. If you have any questions about this or about quantum grammar specifically, feel free to reach out to me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I hope this clears up a lot of the muddiness that I see out there and it will promote a correct language performance from those who choose to use this technology. Thank you.